You know what that sound means? It's time for our surprise today in May. So, today our surprise is two lucky audience members are going to get front row seats right here for their very own Natalie Merchant concert. And our amazing May computer is going to select two seat numbers. If your seat number is called, it means you've been upgraded to VIP status. So, Seat number 59, come on down. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Good. Well, nice to see you. What's your name? Aracellus. Aracellus, what a pretty name. Thank and where you. are you from, Aracellus? Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Oh, great, great. All right, well, we have two VIP seats, so let's see who the, the second seat is going to today. Number 84, where are you? See <laughs> Hi! How are you? It's so great. Hi, how are you? What's your name? Melanie. Hey, Melanie. Nice to. Okay, so are you both big Natalie Merchant fans? Yes. You are? Yes. Fantastic. Well, as you'll see, we've got some beautiful chairs over Ooh. there. You're going to be pampered Ooh. in a very special way. So head on over Thank you. Thank and you. enjoy yeah. yourself. So, <laughs> so nice. They're so enthusiastic, right? I love that. Have a seat. Stephen, do you have a fan for the ladies? Um, yes, I can go get one. Okay, <laughs> all right. Now on with the show. She rose to fame as the lead singer in the hugely popular alternative rock band, 10,000 Maniacs, before going on to become one of the top solo artists of the 90s. In a career spanning over 30 years, she's sold over 14 million records, and now she's back with a new album of all original music for the first time in 13 years. Please welcome the extraordinarily talented Natalie Merchant. <laughs> You have to go over and schmooze with our can, VIP guests. Can, they, can our VIPs, you can sit down. <laughs> They're very excited. Yeah. And we're so thrilled to have you here, Natalie. And I know that you were just 17 when you formed 10,000 Maniacs. Just yesterday. Just yesterday. <laughs> and now a few years later, you're releasing another album. So do you still get nervous about how your music is going to be received? Not at all. I feel like my job is to do the best recording that and writing that I possibly can and it's not in my hands after I put it out. I'm just really excited. And as you mature in age, do you find that sort of what inspires you has changed? Well, my style of writing has always been um, empathetic. I like to put myself in other people's lives and situations and then write from their point of view. And lately what I like doing is create these characters and then dialogue with them, which the song we're doing today is Lady Bird. And it's a dialogue with a, with a woman that I just think it's an effective way to write. People love to be told stories. As right. soon as you say, this happened to me, people are, what? What happened to you? <laughs> yeah. And um, I think people get confused and think that all these songs are autobiographical. But I've written from the point of view from so many different people that it's impossible that I could be those people. I know that, that you were so shy back when 10,000 Maniacs first started. You, and you were so young. Um, how did you get out of feeling really pretty uncomfortable in the spotlight with, with sort of embracing it? Or did you ever get to the point where you embraced it? Well, the unusual thing was that I was socially awkward. And you know, in a situation like this, I probably would have completely caved in. But when I was on stage, I felt like it actually be more normal. I could um, express this kind of depth of emotion that I was feeling, whether it was anger or ecstasy, happiness, sadness, whatever, that on stage I was given full reign. And off stage, I didn't really know what to do with all that emotion. So, um, how did you learn to adjust to it, to that? Doing it for thirty years. Yeah, that'll help, yeah. right? <laughs> I know that that you left Ten Thousand Maniacs in in nineteen ninety three to pursue a solo career, and was that a tough decision for you? 
Well, I'd been with the band for 12 years, and I joined when I was, I actually joined the band when I was 16. I felt like I, I learned so much from being in that group, and they, they were great stewards for me and teachers, and the whole situation. You know, I toured the world, and you know, we signed with a major label, we sold millions of records, and it was all great, but what I really wanted to do is be a songwriter. And I wrote all the words, but I couldn't write all the music. And also, I always felt like I was the spokesperson of the band. And right. I just wanted to speak for myself in my own voice. Your solo debut, Tiger Lily, in 1995, went platinum five times. Do you think your music has resonated through the years because you always try to have some kind of message in your songs? Definitely. And, um, you know, with the 20th anniversary of that album coming up next year, I've been doing a lot of reflecting on how that music has gone off into so many different corners of the world. And um, I even get choked up just thinking about it because I wrote this song, Wonder, and um, it's just about a child born with physical challenges. And over and over, I meet people, and it's been 20 years of meeting people who say that song is about me or that song's about my child. <laughs> I can't even talk about yeah, it because so... in my mind, I just see all these people. And it must be so um, moving and gratifying to know that, in a way, they feel like your voice is speaking for them and mm -hmm. their situations and their children. And that's what I go to art for myself. I, I sometimes, if I lack the ability to put into words an emotional experience, I might look to somebody else's work and you know speak for me because I might lack the eloquence to do it.